We're going to move expeditiously on this morning, and we're going to go right to the epistle of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 3, verse number 18, in the Amplified Version. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians, chapter number 3, verse number 18, in the Amplified Version. We honor each of you in your prospective places. We honor our bishop on this morning. We thank God for the praise and worship ministry that have caused us to be under this open heaven and the atmosphere has been set and there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have 2 Corinthians, say I have it now. The Amplified Version read, and we all, somebody said we all, and we all with unveiled face, continually seen as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Read that again. And we all, with unveiled faces, continually seen as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is that spirit. And then finally, Romans chapter 8, verse 19, the NIV version. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. It says, for even the whole creation, all nature, waits eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. For a few moments this morning, we're going to talk about our theme for the year. And I want to talk to you this morning about it's time to evolve. It's time to evolve. Our subtopic is arise and thrive. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and praise you for this great opportunity to stand before your people. Anoint me, Lord, to communicate clearly my assignment for this house today, my assignment for this people that are here today, those that are listening online, those that will listen in the future online, we thank you and we praise you for what you have declared concerning this house, that it is time for us to evolve corporately and individually. You said it's time to evolve. And before we can thrive, we had to arise. And so we thank you even now that we shall evolve this year in so many areas in our ministry, in so many areas in our personal lives, in so many areas, God, in every aspect of our life, we declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout, it's time to evolve. On last year, last year we had a teaching series entitled, I Am the Church. I Am the Church. And one of the teaching segments of the series was entitled, I Am the Church. I must, I must imitate Christ. The segment text was found in the book of Ephesians chapter number five, verse one through two in the Amplified version. And it reads like this, therefore become, everybody say become, everybody say become. He said, therefore become imitators of God, copy him. And follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. The key word, Bishop, was 
to become. Everybody said become. Become means to begin to be. It means a gradual change. It means to evolve. After that series, the word evolve seemed like it began to reverberate in my spirit. And then the Holy Ghost of God began to magnify the word evolve. And if you're taking notes today, please, amen, make sure you write this down. God is speaking to you about evolve. In Genesis chapter number one, the Bible declares that God, Elohim, the creatorial God, created the heavens and the earth and every living creation. Then the scripture says, and afterwards, he blessed them, talking about Adam and Eve. And he said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. God designed that all of his creation would evolve and thrive. God designed. That's his plan. That's his will for us all to evolve and to thrive. From the moment of your conception, let me bring it home so you can really understand. From the moment of your conception, when the sperm of your father fertilized the egg of your mother and you were conceived in her womb, from that moment, you began to evolve. Is that right? You evolved in stages. Somebody say stages. Tell your neighbor, I sense me being uh, evolved in another stage. Amen. Glory to God. You evolved in stages. The first two weeks at the conception are known as the germinal stage. Then... There is this next stage, the second stage, amen, which is the third through the eighth week is known as what they call the embryonic stage. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. Then there is the third stage, amen. From the ninth week until the birth is known as the fetal period stage. Within the womb, of that mother, the baby is evolving. The baby is developing. The organs are being formed. The heart starts to beat. The blood starts to flow. The organs come together. The webs of the fingers begin to increase. There is heart activity. You know what's going on. The baby begins to move. Why? Because within that womb, that baby is evolving. That baby is going through developmental stages. The baby is growing. And at the appointed day of birth, an infant baby is born. Look at how beautiful God made you. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And since that birth, you have continued to evolve physically into whatever stage of life you are currently in. Listen, God designed for you to evolve and to thrive in every aspect of your life. Naturally so, God wants you to evolve this year. And not only does he want you to evolve, but he wants you to thrive. Amen. He wants, amen, you to evolve spiritually. He wants your relationship with him to evolve. He wants your relationship with him to thrive. He wants you, amen, to evolve and to thrive physically, psychologically, mentally, socially, and economically. Let's talk about this word evolve because I really need you to hear me this morning. Amen. Evolve means to develop gradually. Evolve means to come forth progressively, to come forth progressively, which means making progress 
in stages, making progress not only in stages but in phases, step by step, little by little. Sometimes we have situations where people will evolve a man, a man in a fast pace or on a fast pace. Amen. But God is talking about evolve. And so we're evolving into something better. Evolving into something more advanced. There's another version of you that's waiting to evolve. Lay your hands on yourself and say, there's another version of me waiting to evolve. When something has evolved, Minister Cash, when you use the word evolve with an E-D on the end, that means that change has taken place. Let me ask you a question. Did you evolve in 2020? Did you evolve? I know we've been in a pandemic, but what happened in the pandemic with you? Did you evolve in your faith? Or are you still in fear? Did you evolve in 2020? What happened with your relationship with God? Did you evolve? Did you evolve? What happened? Did you evolve, amen, in relationship? Did you evolve and become more innovative? Did you evolve and become more strategic? Did you evolve and become more creative? What happened in 2020? As they say, 2020 is hindsight. So as we prepare to move forward, I want you to look back and see, did you evolve? Evolve. Somebody say evolve. When someone is evolving, I-N-G, that means that a change is happening. I wonder, is a change happening in you? I know we're in a new year, but you can come into a new year with old ways. You understand what I'm saying? So even though you're in a new year, amen, that means if you want to evolve, you got to change your mindset. You can't do the same thing you did then, amen, and expect something new to happen now. That means, amen, if I came in with the same mindset that, amen, glory to God, amen, and I'm not expecting nothing, guess what? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Nothing is going to happen for you. And so now that you're in a new year, you have to evolve in your mindset. You need the mind of Christ. You need to think like he thinks. You need to, amen, say what he says. You need to say, I will be who he's called me to be. Somebody say, I'm evolving. Say, I'm evolving. And say, if I have to leave you, I'm going to leave you. Amen, because I'm not going to allow nobody to stop my evolution. Tell your neighbor, amen, I'm being, amen, I'm in a, a process of evolution. Amen. And so evolve involves change. Let's say it again. Evolve involves change. Now, you know, I tell you, I've been fought. But I'm going to stand here and I'm going to preach this word today. I'm going to teach this word today. Involve, evolve, involves change. Evolve consists of change. It consists of transformation. You cannot evolve without experiencing change. I'm going to say it again. You cannot, we cannot. I cannot experience what it means to evolve in 2021 if I don't want to experience change. Let me give you some synonyms for the word evolve. I'm going to say it again. You cannot evolve without experiencing change. Some of the uh, synonyms for evolve means to develop. God said in 2021, I want you to evolve because I want to develop some undeveloped areas in your life. There's some areas that need to be developed in you as a person, as a person. These particular areas, God said, I want 
Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You to evolve. So I want to develop you. So evolve means to be developed. It also means to grow. God said, I want you to grow. I want you to grow in every aspect of your life, not just spiritually, but financially, mentally, in every area you need to grow. You need to grow. There needs to be growth. We want to see growth. Somebody said, I want to see growth this year. Amen. Not only does evolve means, a synonym means to develop, it means to grow or growth, but it means progress. Progress. Some of us have been talking about progress, shouting over progress, declaring progress, but we fight change, and that's why you haven't received progress. You want progress, but you don't want to change. You want to remain the same. Guess what? Nothing's going to happen for you if you don't change. Change starts in the mind. Change starts in the heart. You understand? And then, amen, glory to God, then there's an outward expression of what has happened on the inside. Somebody say evolve. It not only means progress, but it means advance and mature. To advance and to mature. To mature. I know some of us are adults, but we still act like children. We still act like children. But God said, I want to grow you up. I know you're a man externally, but I want to cause you to be a man internally. Your mindset, your way of thinking, your way of acting. I know you're a woman externally, but I want you to grow up and be a woman internally, mentally. And so, amen, he wants to mature. He wants to advance Another word means to enlarge. Another word, amen, means to unroll. There is an unveiling, an unfolding. All of this must happen if we're going to thrive. Now, some people want to evolve, but they don't want to change. They don't want things to change around them. They're uncomfortable with change. But it's important that we change. If you refuse to change, guess what? You cannot evolve. If you are not evolving, that means you are stagnant. I'm going to say it again. If you refuse to change, you cannot evolve. And when you are not evolving, that means you are stagnant. Are you stagnant today? Where are you stagnant at? Are you stagnant because you refuse to listen to God? Is it, are you stagnant because you are a procrastinator? Are you stagnant because, amen, you won't follow God? Are you stagnant, amen, for whatever reason? We need to face ourselves and be honest with ourselves. Because the truth of the matter, there's another version of you that's behind the scene that can't come forth until you change. Somebody say, I'm ready to change. Let me tell you something. When you are in stagnation mode, you're not evolving, you're not changing, you're not growing, you're not progressing, you're not maturing, and you're not thriving. Somebody say thrive. See, some of us, we're just surviving. We're not thriving. We're just surviving day to day. Day to day. I'm just surviving. I'm in survival mode. But God said, I want to bring some change in your life because I want to take you beyond just surviving, just being able to pay my bills, just being able to do this and do that. I want you to thrive. I want you to thrive. Why? Because there's more to you. Tell your neighbor there's more to me than what you see. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody else on the other side, there's more to me than what you see. So he wants you to evolve because there's more to you. He wants you to evolve because, amen, he want to take you to the next phase of your life 
in 2021, to the next level in 2021, to the next dimension. Amen. It's waiting for you to what? Become. Back in the 90s, my family and I <laughs> used to go to Blockbuster. Anybody remember Blockbuster? We would get a family and we would get our snacks. <laughs> we would go to Blockbuster, amen, several times a week to get the latest DVD movie. I meant to bring my DVD. Amen. Pretend like I have a DVD in my hand. A amen. Glory to God. VHS. Yes. And we would go there to get the latest movies. You remember that, Greg? You remember that, Sharon, Josh? Y'all remember that? Amen. And there were times when we were disappointed. We were disappointed because due to them only having a limited amount of new releases sometime, we couldn't rent the movie that we wanted to watch. Anybody experience that with Blockbuster? And some of us, we would try to get in good with the clerk and call and say, you got that movie, hold it for me, I'm on my way. I'm gonna give you a little something, something, just hold it for me. <laughs> then, everybody say then. Technology evolved. Somebody say technology evolved. Then when technology evolved, the digital age emerged. <laughs> the digital age emerged. The digital age came and Blockbuster did not immediately evolve to the ship. Tell your neighbor, don't miss the shift this year. Mm -hmm, don't miss the shift. Amen. When the digital age came in, Blockbuster didn't evolve to the shift of the digital age. You know why? Because Blockbuster is like some of us. We become content with where we are. We think, amen, glory to God, we holding the ground. Come on here, we think, amen, we, we got some buildings around here. We, we got some stuff going on, glory to God, and we think we've arrived. And so Blockbuster had become content and satisfied in their current success. I hope you have not become content. Could that be the reason why you have not evolved and why you cannot evolve and why you are not evolving because you become content? Blockbuster had become content and satisfied in their current success. And they failed to realize that there was a greater success, oh my God, waiting for them if they would just evolve and adapt to the new age of digital movies. Tell your neighbor, you stuck, you stagnated. Say it's time to arise and thrive. They became content. But even though success was waiting for them in the shift, they failed to shift. When somebody finally at the top, at the top of Blockbuster realized it's time to evolve, it was too late. Netflix had to over. Can I talk to somebody? How many Netflix watchers we got in the house? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody at the top finally realized we got to make a move. We, we got to do something. Because uh, we're we looking at everybody pass us by. They passing us by. At first we was number one. But then we became content where we were. And so somebody at the top of Blockbuster realized they needed to evolve, but it was too late. Netflix had took over because Netflix understood change. They understood they had to seize the moment. And let me tell you something. I, I did a, a, a little research on this, and Netflix had offered to help Blockbuster. But Blockbuster was too prideful to get help. Come on, somebody. 
They said, we will bring you into the digital age if you give us this and this and this. They said, we got this. How many prideful people are listening to me today? Feel like uh, who you think you is trying to tell me to evolve? You don't know. I'm, I'm trying to help you, boo. I'm trying to help you. If I ever had a word from the Holy Ghost, I bet you I got one today. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. Netflix understood, okay, we got this then. They understood that change had come. They understood that we got to seize this moment. Even though Blockbuster don't want to work with us, amen, amen, and we're trying to help them seize the moment, I tell you what, we're not going to miss our opportunity. You might miss yours, but I'm not missing mine. Unfortunately, Blockbuster missed their moment to evolve. And guess what? They couldn't recover, mother. There are some seasons in your life if you don't act on it, you won't recover. There are some moments in your life, if you miss it, it's gone. It's not coming around again. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. I am God's Western Union woman this morning. It's time to evolve. It's time to evolve. And so with the digital age, let me back up. Blockbuster missed their moment to evolve and they couldn't recover. And they had to file bankruptcy and they went off the scene. They went off the scene. They went off the scene. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going off the scene. I'm coming out from behind the scene. Yeah, they're going to say, who are they? Where did they come from? My God, tell your neighbor, I'm coming out from behind the scene. So with the digital age... With the age of the digital came what we call the age of convenience. Convenience. We started doing things that we typically didn't do. My husband is picky about his food, but now he order food and let people bring it to him. <laughs> he evolved a little bit. What's that, grub who? Grub hub. Yeah, who else? DoorDash. Yeah. <laughs> Bae, they bringing your food? You don't know if they done put something in there? You know? He evolved. Somebody say, thank God the bishop is evolving. He's evolving, he's evolving. So with the digital age came what we call the age of convenience. And you didn't hear people say anymore, let's go to Blockbuster and let's get a movie. <laughs> you didn't hear that no more. Is that right? Instead, you heard, let's stay at home and watch Netflix and chill. Yeah. Let's stay at home and watch Netflix and let's just chill. Convenient. Somebody say convenience. So, what are we to learn from this story? And I'm going to hurry to a close. I know I'm, I'm boring you. What are we to learn from this story, this true story? I believe when you fail to evolve in certain seasons and times of life, you will ultimately affect your future. You will affect your own future. You will affect your own future. And it can be detrimental. And you can ultimately cancel out your own destiny. Cancel out your own destiny. The devil say, man, I ain't got to do it. You did it. You know, we give him too much credit. Devil be like, dang, I didn't do that. You did that. So we got, to, we got to accept responsibility of our own lives and our decisions and the things that we do. Because some decisions you make, amen, you cause things to be worse for your own life. We want to blame everybody else. But you have to accept responsibility for the things that you did and for the things you should have done that you didn't do. 
Stop making excuses for your life and evolve. Cancel out your own destiny. I'm going to stop right there, but I'm going to go to one more scripture. Because in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, we think that everybody that came to Jesus got it good. That's not true. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, amen, the Bible says, and behold, one came to Jesus and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Verse 17, the Bible says, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. Verse 18, he said to Jesus, he replied, which commandments are you talking about? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20, the young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What I lack. In other words, I'm all good. I got that. I'm doing that. Verse number 21, Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that that you have and give it to the poor and you're going to have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, truly, I say unto you, that rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus gave the rich man instruction, let me tell you something. He refused to obey. He refused to obey. The instructions came from the Lord, but he refused to obey. What are you refusing to obey? What has God told you to do and you are so stubborn and hard-hearted and so into yourself and so self-centered and so selfish that you won't listen to the Lord? Really? You won't listen to his word? Really? You're going to basically just put your hand up and say, talk to the hand, Jesus. Really? Really? And so this rich man heard the instructions, but he couldn't evolve in his spiritual life. He could not evolve in his relationship with Jesus Christ because he was focused on his riches and his self. What are you focused on? What's keeping you from obeying God? What's keeping you from evolving? What has your attention? What do you love more than God? What have you put in his place? Why have you taken him off the throne? Who's occupying the throne? You? Who's occupying the throne? Life. Your job? Your business, your boo, who's occupying the throne? Because he missed an opportunity. Because Jesus said, sell it and come on with me. Woo. He had an opportunity to walk with the Lord. A personal invitation to be with him. Come on, he don't get no better than that. But he didn't love him enough to let it go. And say, I'm going to evolve spiritually. I'm going to get close to the Lord. I'm going to let him pour into me. Look at what he missed out. He missed out on so much because he was so focused on his riches. What have you put your focus on that God is saying, put your focus back on me. 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 Put it back on me. I know you come to church and put your focus back on me. 
I know you're serving, but put your focus back on me. I know you're working, put your focus back on me. Put it back on me. This man came to the Lord, had the opportunity to evolve spiritually, had the opportunity to walk with the Lord, to talk with the Lord, to spend time with the Lord, but he made a decision. It's not worth it. Really? And he didn't evolve. It's time to evolve. 2021 is the year to evolve. God said it's time to arise and thrive. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost said the grace to evolve is upon us. The grace that brings change is upon us. The grace that causes growth is upon us. Come on here. The grace that causes progress is upon us. The grace that causes us to advance and to evolve and unfold and unroll, amen, and to mature and to thrive is upon us. But we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility as a people. Individually and corporately, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Somebody say, I have a responsibility. I sense a metamorphous anointing over this house, over this people. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, God said, I am the Lord. <laughs> he said, I'm the Lord. He said, I change not. But let me tell you something. The God that does not change is calling for us to change. He's calling for you to change calling for you to evolve. He's calling for you to arise and thrive in this year. CTC, God wants to make us agents of change. But we got to throw out the old manual. The old manual. There you go. There you go. Because I'm not going to be a blockbuster. Hear me in this house. Don't matter who don't like it. We got to evolve in this house. God has another place for us. He has another building for us. He has stuff for us corporately, and he has things for you. I'm trying to push you there. But you're going to have to hear what the Lord is saying. Going to hear what the Lord is saying. As I close, there's something called the butterfly analysis. The destiny of the butterfly. <laughs> Butterflies go through what we call a life cycle. They evolve. They evolve. Somebody said they evolve. And they evolve in four stages. They have the, the stage of the egg. They have the stage of the larva. They have what they call the stage of the pupa. And then it becomes that adult flower. The metamorphosis from the caterpillar into the butterfly occurs during the pupa stage. That's the stage that it occurs. It doesn't occur in any other stage. When God says this is the season that I want it to occur, it's not going to occur in any other season. If he's talking to you about your situation. Let me tell you something. The, cook, the cocoon was the womb that God used to bring the butterfly forth into his destiny. And there's a cocoon that God has you in. Even as the butterfly. Amen. It didn't look like it was going to be beautiful. Come on here. Because sometimes we... We look at things visually, and we judge stuff before the time. We judge stuff before the time. Amen. But don't judge nothing before the time, the Bible says. Let me tell you something. Amen. When it was crawling around with this, this, this ugly caterpillar, we didn't know that it just needed to evolve. One more time. Whew, one more time. Tell somebody, I'm getting ready to evolve. Ooh, and it's going to be magnificent. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. It needed to evolve. Amen. It didn't look like there was a butterfly in it. But it was. The cocoon was the wound that God used to bring it into its place. And it evolved out of there. Something so beautiful. There is something beautiful waiting to evolve in your life. There is something beautiful waiting, amen, to come forth in this ministry. God has spoken so much, but we have to change. Change starts right here in the mind. Obeying God's word. Coming out of religiosity, Our own ideologies. Coming out of stuff a man that just is not God, but is tradition. Making change. Amen. The epitome, somebody said, of stupidity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. We got to change. We got to change. And it starts in us. It starts in us as a people corporately, and it starts in your life, in your family. He's talking to us about this ministry, and he's talking about us in our personal lives. But they have to be a metamorphosis. They have to be a change. So that means some of us got to change our mentality. We got to change, amen, our perception of things. And we have to, amen, say, Holy Ghost, give me the anointing to be innovative. Give me the anointing, amen, to be strategic. Give me the anointing. It's a whole new era. There are some things may not ever be the same, but you have to change. We have to change. Change is good. Those of you that hate change, uh, you, better, you, better, you better talk to God. Better tell them to help you because you're going to be a blockbuster. Hashtag don't be a blockbuster for those of you that are watching online. Yeah. Hashtag Netflix got next. Let's chill. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, she acting different. Yes, I am. I'm changing for the better me. For the better. For the better. There's another version of me that's waiting to come for. And I said, Lord, however I need to change. I refuse to be a blockbuster. I will not be a would have been and a could have been and a used to be. I'm going to be everything you've called me to be. And I challenge you today to be who God has called you to be. We're going to evolve. We're going to evolve. This is going to be a marvelous year. This is going to be a great year. Your business needs to evolve and thrive. Your marriage needs to evolve and thrive. You cannot, and I'm going to repeat this. I said it in the beginning. You cannot come into the old, the new year with old ways. You cannot come into this new year with old ways doing the same thing and expecting to thrive. What has God told you to let go of? Who has God told you to let go of? What has God said to you about your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't miss this train. Don't miss this train. Those of you that don't like to fly, don't miss the train. But those of you that like to fly, amen, we're going up. We're going up. I don't know what your mode of transportation is, but I'm going up. We're going up. Who's going up in here today? Open your mouth and shout, let's go up. Say, I'm going to arise and I'm going to thrive this year. Glory to God. It's time to evolve.